my name is Judah. I'm having a terrible time with focus right now, which has made me somewhat dread coding. If I'm waiting for an info from somebody, or even if uh, their main environment is taking a bit to spin up, I'm completely onto another thought, opening tabs, switching context on myself. Oh man, like this is a bit of a thing where I, that I, um, I'm working on with my, I have been, the, the first thing that I started working on with my therapist, procrastination and like jumping into other things. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be the same for you, um, but uh, as I as I started working with eliminating these behaviors, like the tabbing back and forth and going to looking at YouTube videos or whenever like a task was boring and stuff, I realized that I had like this enormous set of avoidance behaviors going on, not just that, but like smoking and coffee and uh, a bunch of other things that, that I won't go into. Um, and all of them were there because I had trouble facing uncomfortable emotions. Um, well, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about feelings uh, a little bit and, and uh, hiding, hiding feelings with different, different, emo different behaviors. Uh, I was thinking about talking about this today. Um, so, like if, more than a year back, I started reading this book called I Don't Want to Talk About It, which talks about hidden, hidden depression, uh, especially in, in men, um, where the 80% of suicides or something like that is committed by men or 70. Um, and uh, a lot of men are depressed and they don't really know that they're depressed and just end up killing themselves or self-medicating with alcohol. Um, and he treats a lot of addiction, uh, especially cocaine and alcohol, um, and also um, uh, abuse in relationships, with which he uh, compares a lot to uh, substance abuse because it's something that you get addicted to. Uh, you you realize that you have this switch that you can turn on, like violence or threatening someone with suicide, which gives you absolute control over reality, which gives a huge dopamine rush and relief. Uh, so it's um, it has a similar behavioral effect as as alcohol or cocaine on your when it comes to habituation. Uh, but anyway, when when he starts treating these uh, these addictions or these behaviors and starts removing them uh, from uh, from people's lives, and you stop stop using cocaine uh, or or alcohol um, or in my case uh, cigarettes or uh, procrastination a lot of things start bubbling up because these these behaviors that you have are there to protect you from feelings of, of boredom or stress or uh, ennui or like whatever like any kind of uncomfortable emotion and now suddenly you, f <laughs> you start feeling horrible because you don't have these behaviors to protect yourself. Uh, and you, you have to start dealing with all these things inside. Um, and it's these the brain dumps that, um, uh, who was it in chat that mentioned them? Uh, who was it in chat that mentioned them? Sorry for, for missing it. Shit. <laughs> uh, uh... Oh yeah, underscore funk. Um, sorry, is um, has been instrumental in allowing me to break my emotions up into a more sophisticated vocabulary. I used to use this app called Tracker on my phone. It's just a mood tracker, uh, where you rank your mood, your current mood, on a, like from awful to great. Uh, and as I've been Doing this, removing my, um, removing my avoidance behaviors, as my therapist has taught me to call them. Um, I realized that I can feel like it's not. It's too a simplistic view of viewing my mood. Like because I can feel, I can feel yes, I can feel positive emotions and negative emotions in parallel. So I can feel uh, optimistic about life, but I can at the same time feel anxiety. 
uh, or I can feel uh, happy, but I can also feel a sense of meaninglessness at the same time. They can reside in my in my space because norm like pre and I think it's because my I I, I have just gotten better at segmenting the the emotions in my in myself. It's not actually that I feel different emotions. I have just gotten better at at seeing them and uh, having words for them, structure for them. Uh, and well, that has allowed me to start. I'm, I'm starting to my work on viewing emotions as not as good and bad or positive or negative or constructive and unconstructive uh, or n even in the term of uncomfortable or comfortable uh, I I'm trying to I'm, I met this friend uh, at a party the other day and he's he has since I met him and I got to know him about a year ago or something he has always been this super happy super positive beacon of light in every social context he just like swims in like this he's like it's I don't know like he always walks in like a gala queen you know like it's just <clears throat> life of the party you know and I uh, asked him is this a real thing or do you always are you are you a happy person like and he said like yes I am I am um, I, I genuinely am I like um, I I feel feel good generally all the time but I haven't always been that way I used didn't used to be that way and he said that this was a lot of work and a lot of therapy behind it to get to this point and he said this interesting thing that he I like all emotions I love all the emotions I love um, I love anxiety I love I love depression I love uh, I love sadness I love happiness I love anger and whenever some of these emotions come along, I go, oh, that's interesting, hello emotion. And then you maybe you want to talk with someone else about your emotion and like process it. And that, that's a good discussion point, you know. Um, and he had such an interesting, interesting view of emotions and, and positivity and like constructive space between himself and emotions that I found really interesting. And I had this insight when I was going going to the gym a couple of just before just before uh, going off for um, uh, winter winter break and I just had the best gym session ever where I just like was managed to get completely engrossed in it and it wasn't more comfortable than it usually is it's just that I the feelings of being in the space the the exertion, like the pain in the muscles, I just embraced it. I just embraced it, said yes to it. I just found myself in a space called, mm, yes, I like this. Um, sort of like I felt that, sort of a feeling like I felt that when I've been engrossed in a personal project where I just sit up like late in the morning, my, my brain is so fried and from sleep deprivation that I cannot almost think to myself. But it's there it's good you know like it's cool like we're overtired and we're working on this thing and we're like still super happy about it like it's it's so uncomfortable but it doesn't matter because it's a it's a discomfort that we have chosen um so yeah that's that's what i've been thinking that that emotions are I, i've been escaping a bunch of emotions especially Especially the emotion that I of beginner's mind, beginner's mind of of facing new challenges. I've been so with being a, like a senior level programmer, it's it's so rewarding in the sense that you don't really need to do anything else in your life. Ever like you you're now appreciated for this, and you will there will be infinite demand <laughs> for this, and you can get infinite confirmation from this. Uh, and that has made me so overly confident or comfortable. That I have a hard time learning completely new things. Like I will, I've had really trying to get into dancing and climbing, and both of them are uh, give this sense of like dread because oh I'm new at it, I cannot like I want to be good at it immediately. 
uh, this this pressure pushing myself past that like getting more excited about learning something new um, is is hard and I realized that I instead of facing emotions like that I have just been escaping them like either by avoiding them in the case where well, well, I can just go away from the climbing center or go away from the uh, dance class or not come next time very easy way to avoid it or with work you know like if you don't want to like push yourself to something because it's like it's boring and you should probably get rid of this task or like you know, I don't know you should do something about you in change in your life or, or push through it or whatever um, but you don't really you don't, you don't want to do that so you just like oh go outside have a cigarette or go go have a cup of coffee because that might result in somebody standing by the coffee machine and then you can have a chat and then you can forget about your troubles yeah so yeah yeah uh, yeah only called yay also getting into dancing and climbing that's awesome <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, mm. Tyrion add. Well, it feels like at the moment there's a lot of developers having this kind of bad mood. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm certainly not. Certainly not uh, lonely, uh, alone in this. I feel alone in this, but I'm not. I know I'm not, actually. Mm hmm. My name is Judah. This is super relevant to me. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to pick up that book too. Is it the one by Terence Riel? Yes, it is. It is. Also, I think this is relevant to a broader set of people than developers and maybe an interesting place to take the channel from time to time. After all, what is psychology and self-examination of not engineering? It's like refactoring it, uh, oneself. Holy shit, yes. Holy shit, yes. Um, my, like, since I started... The first thing that struck me uh, after starting to see seeing my my therapist uh, was like it was very much like that feeling like refactoring your mind. Um, we started like drawing out my habit loops uh, on a whiteboard, and he started explaining like how how habit loops and anxiety patterns work in uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and acceptance ACT. Uh, and how you how you build tooling to start breaking these loops so it's not quite refactoring it's more like training a neural network you're just like okay this didn't quite work now we have to like do these training runs um but yeah it's it's certainly it's very similar to software development in a way like you have to like, reprogram your mind and you cannot because it's not like configuration you can't quite do it because you cannot quite just tell it what you do you have to teach it over and over and over again because uh, the brain doesn't the, the brain doesn't trust one input it needs needs a lot <sighs> so yeah yeah that's something that i've been struggling with feelings or breaking feelings and part in understanding understanding feeling sets and getting rid of my addiction so and avoidance behaviors uh, and uh, dealing with the emotions that come up which come up as at least it's just like it's just some bad feeling and then breaking it apart into what is these what are these different feelings and what like what do I need to do about them what is it that I need to do what is it that I need are the changes I need to do in my life or are there reframing of expectations that I need to do so yeah sure yeah so that's that's feelings um, let's move on to something else see what people have been writing <laughs> 